the not-so-secret life of concubines in ancient Greece. As the sun beats down on the crowded streets of ancient Athens, a dark secret lurks within the shadows of the slave market. Yes, behind the sophisticated veil of ancient Greek society lies a hidden world of concubines, coveted but forgotten. Hello, friends. Well, if you often fantasize about the past and really want to know about the history of ancient civilizations, then you're at the right place. Welcome to Unthinkable Past, a channel better known for dishing up the outlandish ancient traditions of all times. In the bustling city of ancient Athens, beneath the shimmering marble pillars and ornate facades, a hidden world existed in the shadows, where the women existed as mistresses, concubines and slaves with their lives marked by hardship, danger and uncertainty. But within this harsh reality, there were secrets, privileges, and unexpected opportunities. Though the practice of keeping a concubine was little recorded, it does appear throughout Athenian history, where the law prescribed that a man could kill another man caught attempting a relationship with his concubine for the production of free children, which also suggests that a concubine's children were not even granted citizenship. In this video, we'll be exploring the not-so-secret life of concubines, called Palakai in ancient Greece, delving deep into their world to uncover the truths and myths surrounding their existence. Join us as we journey back in time to a world that is both familiar and foreign, and discover the hidden stories of those who lived on the fringes of society. So, how were these concubines chosen? In ancient Greece, concubines were typically chosen based on their physical attributes and their ability to provide a certain type of service. Wealthy men would often visit slave markets where they could purchase women, or young boys, called eromenos, to serve as their concubines. The youngest and most attractive individuals would often get chosen for this role. In some cases, concubines were also chosen from among the lower classes of society. Women from poor families who were unable to marry well might be taken as concubines by wealthy men, while young boys who showed promise as athletes or scholars might also be selected as concubines. And some concubines even used to be slaves, sold or given to wealthy men as gifts or tokens of appreciation. Now, how was their courting? Well. The relationship between ancient Greeks and their concubines was not necessarily one of courtship or romance, as the purpose of the concubine was primarily to fulfill the physical needs and desires of their masters. However, the relationship often used to be sort of unequal, with the master holding all the power and the concubine having little agency or autonomy. As such, any courting that did take place was likely heavily skewed towards the desires and preferences of the master, rather than being a truly mutual exchange. Let's now check out which Greek rulers were born out of concubinage? Well, several rulers in ancient Greece were born out of concubinage, or who had concubines themselves. One notable example is Alexander the Great, who was the son of King Philip II of Macedon and his concubine, Olympias. Despite being born out of wedlock, Alexander was groomed to become the next king and went on to conquer a vast empire that stretched from Greece to India. Another example is Ptolemy I Sota, one of Alexander's generals who became the first ruler of the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt. Ptolemy was believed to have several concubines, and he fathered at least six children with them, including his son Ptolemy II, Philadelphus, who succeeded him as ruler of Egypt, and the list goes on. So, was it a life of leisure for these concubines? Absolutely not. Though some concubines have been treated relatively well by their masters, the overall experience of being a concubine was one of subjugation and exploitation, with little opportunity for personal agency or autonomy. For your information, let me tell you here that homosexuality was also prevalent in ancient Greece. Yeah, I'm talking about Eromenos, the male concubines. Well, in ancient Greece, it was not uncommon for men to have sexual relations with other men, and these relationships were often seen as an expression of masculinity and power. Where male concubines were typically purchased for their physical attractiveness and youthfulness, and many were selected specifically for their potential as sexual partners. These kind of relationships were often non-exclusive, and existed alongside marriages, which were considered necessary for the continuation of the family line. However, these relationships were not always consensual, or based on mutual attraction. Many male concubines were subjected to sexual violence and exploitation, and their lives were marked by abuse and degradation. Despite this, male concubines did have some agency in their relationships with their owners, and some were able to leverage their status as sexual partners to gain economic and social advantages. Like, they were often granted access to education, cultural events, and social circles typically reserved for free men, which allowed them a degree of power and influence within the society. Moving on to some of their outdoor activities and leisure pastimes. 
Well, the leisure activities and pastimes of concubines in ancient Greece were limited and often determined by their owners. As they were considered property, their activities were often restricted to their owners' preferences and desires. For example, hunting and horse riding were popular pastimes for wealthy Greeks, and some concubines were trained in these activities to accompany their owners on their pursuits. Concubines were also sometimes allowed to participate in athletic contests and attend cultural events, such as plays, musical performances, and religious festivals. However, they were often confined to a separate section of the audience and were not permitted to socialize with the free men and women. But these opportunities were often reserved for male concubines rather than female ones. Female concubines were typically relegated to domestic tasks and were not granted the same freedom as their male counterparts. Coming to the most dreadful part of the story, talking of their trials and punishments for misdeeds. Well, concubines in ancient Greece were not exempt from the law and could be punished for any wrongdoing. However, due to their status as concubines, they were often subjected to abuse and exploitation, which made it challenging for them to receive a fair trial. One of the most well-known examples of a concubine facing trial is that of Phryne, a courtesan accused of impiety. Despite the high penalty for this crime, Phryne's defense lawyer, Hyperides made a daring move and appealed to her beauty to be revealed to the court, claiming it was a gift from the gods. The judges got so impressed by her appearance that they acquitted her, a rare outcome. Nonetheless, most concubines faced harsh punishments if accused of any crime, including fines, imprisonment, forced labor, or execution, in addition to public humiliation and damaged reputation. Let's have a look at some influential concubines of ancient Greece. Well, there had been several influential concubines in ancient Greece who played significant roles in shaping the political and cultural landscape of their time. For instance, Aspasia, Phryne, and Theus were quite influential. Where Aspasia, the mistress of Athenian statesman Pericles, was famous for her intelligence and her ability to engage in intellectual discussions with prominent thinkers, Phryne used her beauty and charm to gain favor of wealthy and powerful men and was a patron of the arts. And Theus accompanied Alexander the Great on his military campaigns and played a crucial role in the conquest of Persia. All three of these women left their mark on history and were renowned for their beauty, wit, and intelligence. Well, let me tell you here, both wives and concubines had to retire from connubial duties up to the age of 35, which added a lot of dead offsprings. As a result, there'd always be constant need for fresh young concubines. Anyway, let's look into their retired life. Well, the retired life of concubines in ancient Greece is not well documented, but it's believed that the retired prospects for these concubines varied greatly depending on their individual circumstances. While some concubines were able to accumulate wealth and resources during their time as courtesans, providing a measure of financial security in retirement, others were less fortunate. Those who did not amass wealth during their peak time often had to rely on the support of family and friends, or resort to less desirable means of income, such as begging or prostitution. However, even those who are financially secure may have faced social challenges due to the stigma associated with their former profession. Sex work was in fact viewed negatively in ancient Greek society and was associated with a lower social status, which could have made it difficult for retired concubines to integrate into society and find other means of support. Well, there you have it. We hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel without any delay. Make sure you turn on post notifications and let us know in the comment section about your views on the lives of concubines from ancient Greece. Thanks for watching Unthinkable Past. Until the next time we meet, continue learning and stay healthy. Goodbye.